In today's video, why you might consider training even when you're sore. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today we're going to talk about an interesting study review that comes from MASS, the Monthly Application and Strength Sport. Now, for those that are not familiar with MASS, I basically do a review once a month of an article that they publish within. And they basically take all the research that's out there and delve into how it applies to what we're doing, whether it's try to get stronger, lose body fat or perform better, okay? So all the things that go into strength sports and they take all that research and they kind of review the ones that they feel are kind of applicable to what we do and what I do as a coach and what you do as an athlete. If you're interested, I put a link below to get a subscription to Mass. It's been out for over two years now and I think right now they have a big sale going on. If you purchase like a lifetime membership, I think the price is reduced, but they also have monthly, but I digress. The point of this video is actually about recovering from training and it very interesting to me because it kind of gets into some things that I've noticed in my lifetime of training that I've really never been able to kind of put eloquently into words. This study points to some of that being true and the idea is that taking complete rest after you train a muscle and are sore doesn't recover as it would if you trained lightly following, and I'll get into it. But first, let's talk about the design of the study. They had these gentlemen get into the lab and test their one rep max on bench, okay? So they had four visits to the lab. During their first visit, they basically tested their one rep max. The second visit that they went in, they actually performed eight sets of 10 <clears throat> with 70% of their one rep max. And to give you an idea, let's say somebody had a 300 pound bench, that would be eight sets of 10 at 210 pounds. I think any of us can say that that would certainly elicit being sore for most of us. That sounds like a very tough workout. Now, what they did in the follow-up, they had two groups, one group that did not do any type of active recovery and, a type, and one group that did some active recovery. And the active recovery went like this. They performed six sets of 10 with 10% of their one rep max. And again, to kind of put that into context, that would have been for a 300 pound max bencher, 30 pounds, like nothing, like literally hand weights. That's, that's a very light kind of resistance. And so, you know, obviously the goal there is to not create any more muscle damage, but to possibly create some extra blood flow to the area. And although it wasn't a huge difference in recovery, there was a noticeable difference in recovery and soreness in the group that was active versus the group that was inactive. And so, what I wanted to talk about here, not only is it just awesome to see the, the, the research review that they're doing at Mass and kind of bringing things up, um, because now when they start to look at that, they can start to look at perhaps changing the percentages of the recovery, how long you should wait, um, would it be beneficial to do something next day, two days later? You know, these are kind of interesting points to bring up for optimizing recovery when we're talking about, especially in strength sport, where high frequency training is beneficial because you not only get better at the skill, but you get more total training volume over time. So if we can train more frequently, recover better and stay injury free, well, that's something that I think a lot of us would be interested in. So it's just great that they're doing that. But something I noticed a few years ago that I thought correlated well to this was when I usually start dieting down for a competition, I start adding in some steady state cardio to my daily routine, right? It might only be 15 minutes of steady state cardio before I work out um, just to get my body moving. <clears throat> what I noticed was my typical recovery from a very tough leg session. And for those that are familiar with like bodybuilding style leg sessions, we're talking, you know, 20 to 30 sets of pretty high intensity, high volume drop sets. I mean, I would be at times very, very sore in my legs for two, three, four days at a time following these sessions. Well, I would always notice when I would start doing cardio and I would usually do some form of a bike, um, that was my favorite, you know, like the recumbent bike or the, um, the steady bike. I would always notice that I would not be as sore. <clears throat> my early correlations were it was because I started contest prep. I was paying more attention to my nutrition. I was paying more attention to my supplementation. But as I've been training longer now, and I've, I've mentioned this before, but over 25 years, what I do now is I keep some form of light cardio in every day that I go to the gym. 
For this reason, I do feel there is a benefit to recovery to getting blood flow to the area. I just find I'm not as sore and I recover better and I'm able to get into my training sessions better because I don't have that stiffness. And I believe there is some benefit there because of the exact reason that this article discusses and that is although you're not creating more muscle damage, you are increasing blood flow to the area. And there's been plenty of research that has showed that massages can be great for speeding up recovery. Now the real issue there is that, you know, time and affordability. Can we afford a massage every time we train? Not many of us can, but we can all afford to do a couple sets of light working a body part after a session. So there may be some benefit here for those of us that find we're really sore. Usually when we go through training cycles, you're going to be sore, more sore early on during that program as you adapt to the volume intensity or any of the changes that are going on. The stress that has changed is what's causing the soreness. And so early on in a program, it might be beneficial to give yourself a little bit of recovery training after a tough session. If you notice, for example, that your hamstrings are really sore, maybe that day when you go in the gym, you just do some really, really light single leg curls, all right? Or maybe you do something on the bike. Or maybe if you notice that your shoulders or your biceps are really, really sore, maybe you just do some very light work to get some blood in that area, not creating any more muscle damage and allowing yourself to recover better. I think it's very interesting that this stuff is being brought up and it's things that I've paid attention to over the years and I've noticed but never really thought much about and that's why I love what Greg Knuckles, Mike Zoros, and Eric Helms are doing. So thank you guys for all the great work. Again, the link is below if you want to check out what they have going on over at Mass, the monthly application and strength sport. All right, guys, hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow.